Welcome back to another video in which we will be discussing the lock picker and now pilfering script that is available to you guys. So it's Bathus Modern Dungeon Picker. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I've updated you guys on the script, uh, what it does. Uh, what does the script do? You know, it does a lot of things now. And I felt like uh, yeah, it's time to make another video and talk about it. So let's get right into it. I'll try to go over this as quickly as possible. And then I'm going to do a demo. Uh, for just basically everything it does. So right away, let's get into it. So we've got Bathus Modern Dungeon Picker. Now we've got uh, April 10th, 2024, auto pilfer update. Um, a lot of things went into this and uh, it's been sort of built up since the last time you saw a, uh, an update video. Um, so yeah, there's very few required settings now, guys. And uh, most stuff just works. And Honestly, even without these required settings, the script is just going to work. It's basically going to do everything. Um, but uh, just to make sure that it is tuned properly, let's check it out. So the in-game dungeon chest menu, you're going to want to uh, make sure continuous lock picking and continuous remove trap is checked. If it's not checked, the progress is not going to be made on the chest and you'll, you'll notice right away. Uh, so that's really easy to do. <clears throat> so next, auto loot control. Um, you want to use auto queue object delay and you want to set your object delay to 500. Uh, if you don't do this, looting is going to be slow. Uh, it's not going to be super slow, but it's not going to be fast at all like compared to what you see in my videos. So in order to do that, we'll go up to options tab. Now note there's two options here. Um, this is because I'm in the scripts tab, but you want the one next to general. So we'll go to options, we'll go to targeting and queues, make sure auto queue is checked and make sure object delay is set to 500. Okay. Back to the script. Um, next is cooldowns. So I've added another cooldown since the last time. It's called stealing. If you already have these cooldowns, you can just ignore this. But if you don't, you want hiding, stealth, and stealing. Um, this is pretty important for the script. So let's just look at that real quick. So you want to go into your paper doll options, down to cooldowns, and you want to create a new entry. This is where you would type in, uh, you know, hiding, stealing, or you know, stealth. So we'll type in stealing. I already have one, so I'm not going to do that. Make sure it's spelled correctly, guys. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. So right away, up here at Stealth. Um, so you want it just the top part here. So color it. I recommend coloring it so it doesn't all look the same. Uh, hide when inactive. I prefer that. Uh, you may not prefer that, so you don't have to do that. But I like it. And then you are going to want to pause during world save. Now, that's all you need. Um, if you do have trigger text, what's this guy doing here? Okay. If you do have trigger text, um, then you're going to want to set it to 10.3 seconds. There's some kind of weird delay between uh, the Razor, Razor and the actual uh, classic UO client. And that 0.3 seconds is the buffer that's needed for that. But honestly, if you're not using triggers and just don't even, you, you don't need this, not required. Uh, same with hiding. There you go. Um, and then I have stealing at the bottom here. And I've got a lot of triggers down here. It's totally up to you if you want to add these. But we just need the top part. We just need, basically we just need it to be created is all we need. Um, okay, and so that's cooldowns. <clears throat> um, let's see, and yeah, that's it. That's it for the required settings. That's all you need. The script just runs now. Um, absolutely, you don't need to change anything in the script. Uh, you just do those things for razor settings. Now the optional settings, here's where we get into some, some deep stuff here, guys. So none of this was required, but I recommend checking it out because it, it is pretty cool. I've done some pretty cool things here. Um, so right away, optional settings, smoke bomb cooldown. So we'll just go back to cooldowns again and you go to options. You know how to do this. You want it to say smoke bomb. Now note there's a space, capital S, capital B. And yeah, smoke bomb just created just like that. And, and all of your cooldowns can look just like that. Okay, next we have the uh, wizard. Oh, sorry, let me go over this. Uh, so now not everybody has the same cooldown uh, for smoke bomb because we have without a trace and that is a, uh, a thief codex, um, what do you call it, option or whatever. So without a trace here, this reduces your cool smoke bomb cooldown by 20, 40, or 60 seconds. So you can go from full two minute cooldown down all the way down to one minute. Now I have it defaulted for one minute, which means that you technically you don't really, even if your cooldown is different, 
it's always going to be the minimum amount of wait time so you know even if you have if you don't have any points in without a trace this still works fine but if you want it to be perfect um, then you want to match your your skill without a trace to these uh, possible timers so possible timers are one minute one minute 20 one minute 40 and two minutes and in order to change this in the script guys what you have to do is click into the script you want to hit Control F and then you want to hit 60,000 60, 1, 2, 3 and obviously ignore the commented ones but we'll click find next okay so first it finds the commented one second it finds the commented one now there's two real entries here so next boom line 348 um, now this, may ch this line may change in the future but just know that you can always search this 60,000 and then you would change this to whatever you have uh, whatever your smoke bomb cooldown is. So 120,000 is is no uh, without a trace, and 60,000 is all without a trace. So I'm currently spec with three, so I'm going to leave that at 60,000. And of course, there's another one right below it, right here. So there's two of them. So you can just scroll through, you know, see one, two, not those two, then one, two. You know, that's how that works. Okay, so. And yeah, these are milliseconds, by the way. So next we have the wizard hat stealth trick. This is huge, guys. I know some of you, it makes you feel a little bit weird having a wizard hat automatically pop on and off your head. But if you just learn to trust this, it works really, really well. Uh, so um, if you are a big baller um, and you have a lot of gold in your bank account, you should get a armored magical wizard hat you can buy them at the prev vendor i think they're 200k or so maybe a little bit cheaper if you use prev coin and um, you want to get a blessed deed same thing so it's it's up to 400k just to get this hat now if you don't have that kind of uh coin on you you can always just get a regular magical wizard's hat but note that it's from the mage npc in town so there's a tailor npc that sells wizard's hats you do not want that one it must be a magical wizard's hat and that is purchasable from the mage NPC and it is like 35 gold or something all right so uh, so what does this do this uh, so you'll notice when you put a wizard hat on it reduces your strength it reduces your stamina and it increases your in intelligence so there's a kind of a trick you can do here where you put the hat on and you take it off right away now mind you the script does this completely automatically you do not have to do this all you need to do is have the wizard hat in your backpack magical wizard hat and so it it puts the hat on it takes it off like very quickly when it does that it knocks your stamina down off of max stamina by minus five stamina points so that means that you cannot push through players or mobs because your your stamina is not max right the only way you can actually push through a player or a mob is is by having maximum stamina so that's what this does i think you guys understand what's going on here so the script always kind of keeps your stamina under maximum so that when you're stealthing around, you will not pop out of stealth. So this is huge. This has been used since 1997, guys. Ever since, like, like this is like such an old trick. It's like one of the oldest tricks in the book. Now, mind you, we didn't have scripts to handle it for us back in, you know, 90, 98, 90, 99 or whatever. Uh, but uh, we have one now. So there you go. It's going to automatically do it. And... It's, it's so worth it because this will save you from stepping over stuff constantly. And uh, and we'll just run it. We'll just watch how it works. Let's, let's take a quick look. So I'm going to play the script. So there it goes on and off. Now you can see I have my stamina meter under here. It knocked it down to 20. Now it's going to slowly build up to, 20, 20, or to uh, 25 out of 25. As soon as it hits it, boom. Hat goes on, hat goes off. So that means, say we want to walk up to this creature right here. Bonk. Yep, he just bonks right in it. Now, now, wait a second. When it goes to, when it's near, this is why I have this here. When it's near 20, uh, sorry, when it's near maximum 25, watch what happens when it hits 25. You will walk through it. Boom, see? So just be aware that that's how that works. And yeah, we'll just avoid that guy's flames right there. So really important, guys, if you want to be like a, a perfect stealther, just know that like basically this makes it so you're protected against pushing through stuff like about 98% of the time. So just be aware though that when that hat does go back on, there's that split second where you can push through the mobile.
or the player or the mob. Uh, we call them mobiles. All right, so um, now there's another thing here. Uh, there is a possibility, it's pretty rare, but there's a possibility that the hat can get stuck in a spam loop. So that means you'll, it's very noticeable. You'll see it, it just spams, hat on, hat off, hat on, hat off. And if it's doing that, that means that the script, um, it did not record your hats properly. So like I say, it's very rare. It's probably not gonna happen, but if it does, the way to fix it, it's very easy. You go to the script tab, which we're in right now. You go to the script sub, uh, sub tab options right here and you'll see all the variables. Now, these are my variables. You're probably not gonna see any of these except for a couple, which is bmain and bwiz. All you have to do, it's probably gonna be at the top, by the way, is just delete these. If you delete them and then you go and play the script again, the script will re-record your hats. And it's, it's, it's done very smartly, so it, it, it shouldn't mess up, but if it does, that is how you fix it. Uh, okay. And next we have, okay, so this is the big update, auto pilfer and then um, hide stealth blocking. So it's, it's the auto pilfer. So I've worked auto pilfer into war mode. So now uh, war mode does two things. It will block hiding and stealth. Um, so that's like used for boss room custodians or say, say you're hiding in a chest and the script will automatically stealth you one time so that you get a double stealth. If you don't want that to happen, you can always just pop into war mode and it will block stealth. It'll block hiding too, but you know, just we'll, I'll show you how that works. Yeah, there, I'll do a demo of all of this. Um, but now the war mode now, when you're not at a chest, um, it just just seamlessly uh, activates the auto pilfer mode, and this this uh, it basically um, it's uh, there's three three ways of doing this and. Um, I'll show you that in the demo. It's really cool, so just stay tuned for that. Okay, next we have auto chest protection. So um, this I made a video on uh, of how it actually works, like what it looks like when each one of these uh, uh, protective stances is activated. And this might sound a little complicated, but it, it's very easy. It, it works automatically, it's, it's super easy. So um, if you have 50 or more majory um, and scaling up to 100, it's going to unlock um, certain toggleable uh, stances, I call them stances, and they are as follows. Uh, wall, wall of stone, earth elemental, teleport and rope, and reveal, reveal spell. So basically all you need to do is acquire an atlas, which is very easy, you just type in atlas like that in the game, and you can see I have one down here. And while the script is playing, you just click your atlas, or you can make a hotkey for it, and it will cycle through the stances. So I'll just do that real quick for you. So the script is playing. And now I don't have enough majory for uh, Earth ele Elemental, excuse me, in this build. And so it will therefore ignore the things that you cannot use. It's smart like that. So here we go, Wall of Stone, enabled. Teleport, slash rope, enabled. Now these are one at a time, obviously. It's not both at once. Um, then we have reveal. And you'll notice that periodically it will it will remind you which one you have activated so there you go reveal acp active that's just to remind you that you know as you're walking through a dungeon if you don't want that on you should probably turn it off just by simply cycling all the way to off so disabled now i was clicking now there's a hotkey too the hotkey is really nice i like that i just like to you know cycle through now this does do a ping check and you can see my ping is kind of high right now. It's at you know, 70, 80. It's usually you know, around 60. Oh, there it goes, down to 60. Um, so if you have high ping, this is gonna lag a little bit. It's just gonna do that. And so just you know, be aware, just be patient with it. Just press it once and then wait for it. And you can see up in the top left corner here, it's actually opening the atlas and then closing it right away. So that's where it's kind of, you know, it uses some, uh, uses your, uh, your ping a little bit because you, know, you have to ping the server to open the atlas. Um, that's just background stuff. <clears throat> okay, so we'll stop that. And of course, guys, watch the video on what happens when somebody reveals you, or sorry, detects you, um, while you have that active. And that's pretty cool, cool little video there. And uh, next we have uh, loot bag. So yeah, if you don't want the loot to be in your main bag, 
you can use a set grab item hotbag key. And that's pretty easy to do. You just go up here to hotkeys, go to filter there, type in grab, and then we have set item grab hotbag, uh, hot bag, and you want to bind that to a hotkey. And you can, once you bind that to a hotkey, you can just, uh, you know, you can click any, you know, I think mine is, uh, yes, oh, that's grab. Sorry, let's go and grab that, put that in there. So set grab hot bag, so I click that. Now all the loot that I loot from chests is gonna go into that bag. You can do that with uh, locked containers. You can do that with just this. If you wanna just default it back to your backpack, you can just set it to your backpack. And then, you know, click it once and it'll tell you, grab item hot bag. So that is a manual thing that you can do. Uh, okay, next we have auto stealth. So there is an auto stealth feature in this game. Uh, you just simply type in auto stealth. I recommend having this on uh, because uh, even if you don't like auto stealth, you can still like manually use stealth. However, there's kind of like a weird sort of, I don't know, bug feature type thing in that um, auto stealth will not conflict with the stealing cooldown. So you can like, you can steal from something and then auto stealth right away. But you already have to be hidden. So some of you guys might know what I'm talking about on that. I wanted to work this into the script in a really clever way in which we could take advantage of that, but unfortunately there's not really a way for me to do that automatically. Uh, just, just the way you know the game is, is set up, you can't do that automatically. So if you are one of those guys that likes to preload a, st uh, preload a steal and then use your auto stealth, uh, the pilfer thing is not really going to work that great for you. <clears throat> um, it still works, it's just you're, gonna have to auto you're just going to have to manually click stuff. Um, so, but we're gonna we're gonna do a demo on that. Okay, spam reduction. So, yeah, you might notice, guys, that there's some spam with this script. Uh, there's gonna be some overhead spam with the pilfer uh, locator, <clears throat> and there's also going to be some uh, system message spam if you're if you have to replay the script while you're at a chest. So we can eliminate all of that very easily just by following these simple instructions. So we go to the options tab and back to targeting and cues. So back to this one. And we want to uncheck here, attack target name overhead. So uncheck. Now you might like this, you might want to keep it in. Personally, I find it to be very annoying and uh, there's not a lot of use cases for it. Um, maybe in PVP, if, if like you're cycling through targets and you really want that name to pop above your head, um, you could do that. But honestly, it's, uh, it's not a very good feature. So it's good to just turn that off. Okay, and then next we have that up. Oh yeah, filters tab. So filters tab and then text and messages sub tab. So we'll come up here to filters and then we're going to click on text and messages sub tab. And here we have filter repeating system messages. We wanna check that on and filter repeating razor messages. We're gonna check that on. And that is about all we need for that. It's gonna get rid of all your spam. Uh, next we have summoners. If you are a summoner um, and you want to name your elemental, you can simply go down to line 104 or line 114 and change that. And that's just right down here, right right here at the front of the script, top of the script. So 104, so you would rename this right here. You want to leave it in quotations though. So you could just name it like my Ellie, you know, simple. And then you also rename this one down here. So that's how that is done. So the default's gonna be loot golem. Now there's a chance that a player might name themselves Loot Golem, and, and because Outlands has unique names, if somebody does do that, it will block the naming of your elemental. <clears throat> I've already had to change that once. Somebody named themselves Treasure Golem. <laughs> it used to be called Treasure Golem, uh, and then, yeah, they took my name. So um, if, if a player does do that, not to worry. Uh, it doesn't affect anything. It just makes it revert back to the name of the elemental, which is an Earth Elemental. Okay, and so now we've got recommended builds here. So guys, this is just recommended. This is just what I like. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can slice this thing. Um, but I've got it put up into three categories that works particularly well with this script. And uh, so the first four here, detect, hidden, lock picking, stealth, and hiding, <clears throat> these are all gonna be the same for each one of these. Uh, the only things that are changing here are the bottom three. So as a summoner, you're gonna need that 100 Majory and you're gonna need the 80 Spirit Speak. 80 Camping, still pretty good. As a Pilferer, you're gonna want 100 Stealing. Now I did 
practice, or sorry, I did uh, uh, test this with 80 stealing versus 100 stealing, and yeah, I confirmed that 100, 100 stealing is 100% the way to go. Uh, so we got camping at 80, we got majory at 80. So majory at 80 is still pretty nice. We can't summon an earth elemental, but we can still get access to all the spells up to level six, circle six. Um, now, one thing about the pilferer build though, is when you're building this and you're you're gonna need to level the thieves codex. And unfortunately, there's no way to level the thieves codex uh, like really well with just this build. So you're gonna have to start out with snooping. And the way I did it was I just simply dropped my lock picking to zero. I picked up snooping uh, to a hundred. I leveled the codex, and then as soon as I got um, shadow hands, I could drop drop the snooping and pick lock picking back up so to complete the build. So it's a little bit weird, you know, like uh, because chests don't give you XP for the thieves codex, only really pilfering and mugging does. So you've got to pilfer or mug. And then guys, it's pretty easy to level this thing. I mean, once you get six points, um, you can drop your snooping. Okay, and now we have Ninja. Uh, same thing with Ninja. You're going to have to do the snooping thing and get the uh, codex. Um, but this one is not for pilfering. This is just for moving around the dungeon with really fast smoke bomb cooldowns and some really nice uh, avoidance from, um, uh, what's it called? Overlooked. Uh, so that's the Ninja build. And uh, right now in this video, um, for the demo purposes, we're going to be doing the Pilferer because we've got the we've got the new Pilferer edition. Okay, so next, recommended aspects, links, and codex. So guys, I have been leveling Fortune Aspect um, primarily because it gives you an XP bonus for your chain, and you know I've been leveling Gadget on my spellbook. So I basically you know I've never even placed a trap with Gadget yet, and I'm already at like you know tier 12 just from opening chests. So Guys, if you want to level your stuff, level your chain, level your aspects, this is the way to do it. You use Fortune Aspect, and you you get pretty good loot from chests. Although I'm here to tell you guys, Harvest is is like I want to say a lot better, but it's like a medium amount better. It's not a little better. It's more than a little better. Overall, Harvest it doubles so many things in the chest, and and you're going to make more coin off of Harvest than you will Fortune. When it comes to dungeon chests. Now as a sidebar here I'll explain that uh, there's a synergy with t-mapping and fortune aspect for dungeon chests because although uh, harvest is better uh, all around for for more wealth creation fortune aspect will get you more treasure maps and and it gets you more uh, um, uh, rares that are not uh, stackable so that's like you know uh, boots or footwear that's uh, uh, rares that, that don't stack like antiquities and, and things like that um, and that is treasure maps most importantly so the play here uh, f you know just just as a digression is to get treasure maps from the dungeon chests using fortune aspect and then when you go and dig the treasure maps up you want to use harvest to open the treasure map that's like the way guys that's like you know you don't have to buy any treasure maps, you can go acquire your own, and it's just crazy how much uh, coin you can generate, how many how many items you get. It's insane. Um, there's probably not going to be something better than that in the game for a while. Even with Wildlands coming out, <clears throat> that's just like, it's the way to go. So anyway, I digress. Uh, so next we have the special slash rare loot links. <clears throat> now, if you're using Harvest Aspect, I would recommend just stacking special and rare loots because you don't really need the chest success chances. Harvest gives you that that uh, that bonus to the chance, so you can use like iron tools and um, and uh, yeah, you don't need to stack your uh, progress links just yet. But if you're using fortune aspect, you probably are going to want to at least have a few of these links before you max out the special rare links. Just because you're going to need that chest chance because unfortunately fortune <laughs> does not give you any uh, uh skill bonus okay so yeah um and just note guys that you can the special rare loot chance links you can have up to 20. Um, i think they're the only links that allow you to go past 10. Uh, but yeah there you have it so now if you are a summoner it's really important to have Spirit Pact enabled. Spirit Pact is the most important thing, especially if you're going to use 
the the ACP for the elemental. If you're using ACP and you do not have ACP for the elemental and you don't have Spirit Pact, you're gonna die. <laughs> like it's just not good. But the good news is with that is it's only two points and it's very easy to get. Uh, and then also we have Earth Pull. Earth Pull is kind of like uh, it's kind of like overlooked in a way. Uh, like if you're close to your elemental, your elemental is going to take all the aggro around you. I think it's within three tiles. So as long as your elemental is within three tiles of you, which is really easy when he's following you, all the aggro is just going to go to him, and you're just basically you know walking around scot free. It's just it's awesome running around. Um, so yeah, those are the upgrades you want. And outside of that, just just make your earth elemental more tanky. It's up to you how you want to do that. If you've got more points to spend. Um, and then I'll also mention that the Summoner Tome, it's it's hard to level uh, with uh, with this build. So if you look at the Summoner build, I mean, you basically just have to kill stuff really slowly with your, with your summons. And, uh, you know, that's okay for getting a few points. You can get Spirit Pact and Earth Pull that way. I think it's like eight points. So, you know, a couple hours of farming with like a really crappy build for, for, for farming that way. Uh, will get you the points that you need. So you can do that with that build, it just takes a while. But if you're gonna max the Earth element, Elemental out all the way up to, uh, is it th I think it's 30 points. Let's just look real quick. Uh, yeah, 30 points. So in order to get 30 points, <clears throat> you gotta kill a lot of stuff with your Elementals. So you may want to echo into like a summoner character that's not lockpicking to get this first. But like I said, guys, all you need is Spirit Pact and Earth Pull. That's eight points. And yeah, that'll take you about two hours, three hours at the most <clears throat> with this build. Okay, uh, next we've got uh, yeah, Ninja here. So Ninja, you're going to want three points in Overlooked and three points in Without a Trace. The rest is up to you. Um, without a Trace is the Smoke Bomb cooldown, obviously, and Overlooked um, reduces the aggro range of mobs. So I think, I don't know what the aggro range is exactly. I think it's like 12 tiles. So if you have three points in that, those guys won't notice you until uh, about nine tiles or, you know, whatever whatever the number is. Um, okay, next we've got uh, the Pilferer. Uh, you're going to want Camouflage um, and Shadow Hands, three points in those. Uh, camouflage, it, uh, it makes it so you don't get revealed. Well, there's a 1% chance that you can be revealed with three points, but 99% chance to not be revealed when pilfering successfully. And then we've got Shadow Hands that allows you to drop snooping and uh, you can finish the build. And then of course we have, it's your choice here, do you want a smoke bomb cooldown? Uh, so you can do without a trace. Or do you want extortion? Extortion is pretty nice because it amps up the loot that you get from pilfering. Um, okay, so last thing to mention on the builds here. Uh, guys, you can definitely drop lock picking and detect in order to raise something like camping. Uh, if you're using high-end tools. Now this is really only true for harvest aspect. You can do this with fortune, but you can't drop much because fortune, fortune doesn't have that bonus. So harvest gives you such a huge bonus to the um, to your lock picking and detect hidden skill that you can drop it. Now keep in mind that detect hidden, there's no functional difference between 100 and 120 detect hidden when it comes to revealing other players. <clears throat> it's, it's exactly the same. It's a 100% chance, which is pretty freaking OP. And uh, I suggest they maybe make a change to that, but that's another story. So um, you can certainly get your detect hidden down to 100. You can get your lock picking down to 100 if you're using harvest. And then you can boost your camping up to 120. That's a really good way of doing it. Or you, maybe you want more spirit speak. You want a tankier earth elemental. Maybe you want some alchemy in there, you know, personally I wouldn't use alchemy, but uh, you know, something, you know, maybe some tracking, you could put tracking in there and that would help to, if you want to look for other players, 40 tracking is, is, is enough if you have detect for hidden players. And uh, yeah, so, so yeah, just, you know, you want to balance your tools to your skill level and it, depending on where your aspect is, is going to, it's going to sort of dictate which tools you use. And uh, yeah, that's that. So uh, rares, so notes on rares. Now guys, I've added almost every single rare that can possibly be looted out of a chest in this script, but I'm missing a couple. I'm uh, missing, I think maybe uh, I'm like 10 or 12 of them, maybe maybe 15 at the most. And uh, I know exactly which ones I'm missing and I'm still looking for them right now. And when I find them, I will be putting them in here and updating them as soon as possible. So just keep an eye on the chest guys. Don't Don't assume that um, 
it's going to loot every single rare because there's just some that I haven't put on the list yet. So keep an eye on that chest. Um, now there's going to be an error, so notes on error. So this happens occasionally, it's just not very often, but uh, usually it happens with screen transitions. So if you're going from, from level 1 to level 2, uh, there's a chance that while the script is playing, um, it's going to just stop. It's just going to stop playing. So all you have to do is just replay the script. Um, this also happens less so when you're teleporting far distances. And by that I mean like, say you do like a teleport rope for 10 tiles and 10 tiles and you're being an ultimate badass just ripping through a dungeon. There's a chance that the script will error just because, you know, it's some bug with Razor that, uh, you know, it's like trying to look for a chest that was like off your screen and then it crashes. So it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, just replay the script. And um, <clears throat> so just real quickly, I'll go over um, I recommend that you guys put loop this script into your commonly used scripts. And um, I'll show you what I mean. The most important one is that if, if you have a teleport rope script, you should definitely put it in that. <clears throat> like before you even run the script, do that. So now I'm going to grab my teleport script here. So I've got rope and teleport. Now, um, Mine's a little bit weird here. I, I'm try, I attempt to make a cooldown, just ignore that, but this is really it right here. And all you need to do is add these three lines right here. So, so if skill, quotations, lockpicking is greater than or equal to 50, by the end of the script, it's just gonna play the auto lockpick script. Now here's the thing. The script name is Bapith's Dungeon Modern Picker, but when you save the script into your own Razor profile, into your, into your Razor scripts, it's gonna ask you what you wanna name it. So some guys name it something, you know, just like chest picker or they name it, maybe it's a default name. So you gotta make sure you match the name of your script. So say you named it like, you know, Larry's Lock Picker Script, right? So whatever, let's say you named it that. <clears throat> okay, I didn't type that in right. So, if, if it's named Larry, you gotta match it, right? Because what this does, this function right here calls a script that's in your script library. And then you put it in quotations, and that's that's the one. So for me, mine is just simply called auto lock picker. Or sorry, auto lock pick. That's what mine's called. Yours is gonna be called whatever you named it. So now I'll show you this like right here. You can see right here. This is my auto lockpick script. That's the name that I'm matching. Okay, so do that for whatever scripts you're using. Uh, I use a lot of command scripts like follow, st uh, stay, and patrol, that sort of stuff. You can link them right into that. Just do the same thing. Just put those three little lines at the bottom of your script. And uh, yeah, that's that. And I will show you why that's so important with teleport in just a moment here. Um, actually, we're going to do that right now because that is it. That is it for the the script breakdown. And I know that was a bit long-winded, guys, but uh, you know the script is basically at its maximum. You know, I, I probably you know who knows maybe in six months I'll I'll do another edition, but so far, I mean I, I'm having pr problems even thinking of anything I can possibly add to this. So yeah, so let's do a demo now, guys. So we are here in uh, Inferno. And we're gonna start with a pilfering demo. So like I said, there's three ways of doing this. So we're gonna play the script and uh, my magic reflect is ready. So now it, it kind of gives you these little seatbelt warnings once in a while. Uh, if you can cast it and if you don't have the buff, it's just gonna tell you, hey, just remind yourself, you know, you can do that. It's gonna do that for uh, reactive armor and for magic reflect. Okay, so now, so what happens when we go into war mode now? So watch, watch this, we go into war mode and boom, see how it scans everything? Now it does say target above their heads. You're not gonna see this unless you enable that in Razor Options. It's totally up to you if you wanna do that. Um, I'll just show you real quick. That is in, I believe that is in display. No, it, uh, options, targeting cues. So it's right here. It's just show target text indicator. If you want that on and you can put whatever, whatever you want in there. Mine's purple and it says target with little uh, stars beside it. So that's not into the script, that's just a razor option. But it's kind of cool though, right? Like it's scanning, it's like, it's like, okay, it knows where all the monsters are. 
Now when you walk up to a monster in war mode, like this, as soon as you come within range, uh, I'm going to wait for my stealth uh, cooldown to go down, as soon as you come within stealing range, it's going to lock right onto him, and right there, and it's going to pilfer. Boom. Auto pilfer. Pretty cool, right? And now it's going to tab you out. As soon as you pilfer something, if you, if you succeed or fail or whatever, it's going to tab you out and it's going to turn the auto pilfer off. So all you need to do to do it again is just turn it back on. And so we're looking, we're looking, right? Now we're going to get up to this guy and boom. See we have target acquired, but we're waiting for our stealth cooldown. And just wait for it and boom, pilfered. Pretty nice, huh? So now that's stealth. Now let's see if we can fail on something. Because if you're doing this in stealth mode, just like I'm doing now, where you start out in stealth, there's an automatic uh, protection that will happen. So if I fail, it's going to try to smoke bomb you. And if your smoke bomb's on cooldown, it's going to just invis you on spot. If you have enough, if you have major aim, that is. So yeah, just be aware of that. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to fail. I had to just do a cut because I wasn't failing enough. So hopefully this demon will fail us. Waiting for stealth. Okay, pilfer. Let's try this guy down here. I'm gonna have to maybe, maybe he'll walk to us. Come on, walk one more step up. Oh, he's being stubborn. Okay, we gotta activate our stealth. Okay, just waiting. You can also pilfer from two tiles away, guys. And, okay, there we go, we failed. So when you fail, it's gonna automatically smoke bomb you. Okay, now, if we fail again, when we have a smoke bomb cooldown, which we didn't, it's gonna just cast invisibility on yourself. It's just gonna right away invis. So maybe this demon will do it for us. Our auto pilfer mode engaged. Okay, and we've got our molten demon target acquired. Hopefully this fails. Yeah, there we go. So now, boom. See that? The demon didn't move. He didn't notice me. Because it was so quick, right? So that's how that works. Pretty cool. So now those protections are only going to happen when you're already stealthing. And uh, that's how, that's like function one of how it works. Now, that's that's one way of doing it. Now let's go up here. Let's let's look at this guy here. And obviously it's, it's tracking chests too. Um, if you're just pilfering and you have no lockpicking skill, it's going to ignore chests. It won't track chests. But uh, we've got, you know, this build has both. So now I know a lot of you guys like to do this, right? You like to cast invisibility. Now if you know pilfering, you get a 25% chance bonus to stealing from pilfering uh, if you're hidden. Now that works with both the hiding skill and the majory uh, six circle invisibility spell. So I'm going to precast my invisibility spell. I'm going to go into war mode for scanning and I'm going to run up to this guy and hide. Boom, pilfer. See that? Okay, and he, he did run into me and did a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, I almost died there because of this. Yeah, some of those guys charge you. Right? Be aware of the chargers. Okay, um, let's just, uh, we'll do it to this guy too. I just want to get away and heal. Actually, we'll just choose another mob up here. Okay, so we'll go to this Beastmaster here. So we, we do our invis, right? We go into war mode. So we can see the scan. And just run right up to him and hide. Boom, pilfer. So that's like a really, that's like speed pilfering, you know? Like you just run and you invis at everything. Let's do it to this little guy too. Run up to this guy, invis. Wait for stealing, pilfer, you know? Like really fast. So, um... There's no auto response for that. Um, there's no no smoke bombs going to happen. No invis is going to happen when you do that. Okay. And uh, lastly, we have uh, no no hiding. Right. So say you just want to like run through a dungeon, and you just run next to a mob, go into war mode, boom, pilfer. Right. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you do this, you do not get the hiding bonus, and you will fail a lot. So. Let's, let's fail here. Now, if you do fail when you're doing this, doing it this way, where you're just running through, 
Let's see if we fail on this guy. Okay, no, we didn't fail. And he, he punched us or something. Uh, let's go over to... Let's go over to this one. Boom, okay, see, I failed there. It says, Arch, I failed to pilfer. Now, when that happens, they retaliate against you and they do quite a bit of damage. So if it retaliates, it will automatically drink a healing potion. And so there is there is a little bit of a, a help there. So if you have a healing potion, retaliation will be met with an instant drinking of that potion. It's pretty nice because, you know, some of these retaliations do like 50 damage. And if you can mitigate that, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, guys, so that's pilfering. That's auto pilfering. That's all I have to say about that. And uh, I really hope you like it. If... Uh, if you um, if there's something you don't like about it, just let me know. Leave it in the comments. Um, I'm definitely open to to any kind of changes or anything like that. All right, guys, real quick, I just want to show you some summoner features that the script has. So uh, we have Earth Elemental ACP that can be enabled when once you have you know the ability to summon and summoner elemental here. So it'll change the name to Luke Column right away, so you can change that to whatever you like. And it's going to auto patrol when you get to a chest. So this is really just you know something that makes it so he's not nearby you when uh, when you're using him. So there can be some AOE concerns, and uh, yeah, you don't want to have that guy nearby you. And so just be careful. You know, <clears throat> use guard mode on your way to the chest. That's usually what I do. And uh, yeah, those are the summoner features. All right, guys, real quick, I just want to go over the auto protections that this script also has when you're just kind of running around. So it will cure poison. It will cure, it will use a cleansing brew if you need one. Um, it will pop a trap pouch if you get paralyzed. It'll drink a strength potion if another player uh, weakens you. And it will also uh, drink a strength potion and a refresh potion if you accidentally walk overweight. So we are actually overweight right now so let's come out to stealth and just test that so auto that and then then boom there you go <clears throat> so that's how that works now this tribal hunter hopefully poisons me there he goes oh and i'm ill so that's the two for there i got uh cured and i uh, used the cleansing brew and yeah. i'll show you real quick paralyze myself and auto automatically pops you out of we'll do that when we're running here so yeah it's a little kind of brief little pause because the script is quite long but yeah, i just quickly will do that all right guys uh now i want to show you how why it's so important to loop the lock picker script into your teleport script this is how i do it and this is how i can you know this is the, this is how i'm like picking chests so fast teleporting them um, uh, so I'm going to go over what the script does completely now with uh, chests. So, okay, well, I didn't need to do that, so let's go over here. So I like to teleport to chests, right? So we got to make sure our cooldowns are not. Make sure there's no stealth cooldown, no hiding cooldown, no stealing cooldown. And we're just going to double teleport right to that chest. Now, see that? It automatically hid me as soon as I was done teleporting because I looped the script in to the back end of my teleport script so highly recommend you guys do that and um, yeah so let's see now it's it's auto doing everything it's gonna auto loot it's gonna stealth you one time uh, okay my again my stealing cooldown I have to fix that that's just me that's not gonna happen to you so don't worry about that um, that's just my trigger text so now anyway it's gonna stealth you one time while you're at a chest and that is going to allow you to do a double stealth when you're ready to move. So I'm ready to move now. The chest is looted. And let's do a double stealth. So I'm just walking. I'm going to just not do anything. I'm just going to keep walking. Two, one, zero. And boom, stealth activated. So look at that. Look how far we're walking. I don't even have shadow aspect. I've got fortune aspect right now. So there you go. So double stealth. Now, I realize that you guys may... It's situational, right? You may not want that. So let's take a look at this chest. Let's pick. And let's go find another chest. Say hi to the NC guys. And hopefully there's just a chest right up here. Hopefully, okay. All right, there's so many people on right now. 
There's like 3,000 people on the other day. That's concurrent. Okay. Oh, and by the way, guys, did I did, did I mention that? That uh, I think I already mentioned that. Yeah. Okay, we've got a chest. All right, we've got a chest. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna teleport to the chest because that's the best way to do it, right? You t oh, okay, well, sometimes you can't teleport to stuff in Inferno, but boom. So you teleport, hides you automatically. Now you're hiding, as soon as your hiding cooldown is done, it's gonna auto stealth you. But if I wanna block that, just go into war mode. Watch, war mode, blocked. But if I wanna back, go back, and it's gonna auto stealth you. One time stealth, so that it, it allows you to have the double stealth. Oh, we got an Inferno Lantern, dude. Look at we're getting lucky in this video. <laughs> That's cool. We got the we got the rainbow uh, thing now. We got the uh, chromatic distillation. That's a new item. Those are also on the loot list now. And uh, yeah, so guys, that's about all I have to say. Uh, the uh, oh, and, and one more thing, one more thing, last thing. So war mode. Not only does it enable pilfer, but it also enables. Uh, Looks like these guys are doing... Oh, there's a chest here. Okay, you guys, don't fuck with me. I'm just doing the chest. Yeah. Go away. People are so paranoid when they're in the boss rooms. Hi. Oh, thank you. I'm making one right now. You are in it. <laughs> Content creator. Oh, that's nice. It's funny, I thought these guys were gonna be jerks. <laughs> They're like, get out of my boss room. Sometimes people will attack you if you're in their boss room. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so uh, that was nice. All right, so now, guys, if you're in a custodian room and you wanna block hiding, you just, obviously, you just go into war mode and it's gonna, it's gonna block hiding, especially when you're at these chests because you don't want the custodian revealing you, right? And so other than that, um, if you just simply want to block hiding or stealth at any time, give him a kiss. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was a girl, actually. I don't want to be blowing kisses at men. <laughs> you know, I don't really, this doesn't mean that much, you know. So, okay, so I'll just do that real quick as we're talking. So now if I wanted to block hiding there, I just go into the war mode and, and it's going to block hiding, it's going to block stealth. So. Again, it's going to block the one-time stealth, but as soon as you go, if you want to leave it there, that's fine. And then boom. Okay. So maybe we'll get something cool out of that. Oh. And we got some good rares. And uh, here comes the NC train here. So guys, that's going to be about it. Uh, I think I covered everything for the demo. Uh, again, watch the ACP automatic chest protection video if you want to see a demo on how that works. And uh, yes, stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be another video for my lockpicker series. I think we're going to do like Cavern Am or something. Um, not sure yet, but uh, I'm going to be filming that. So look out for it. And guys, enjoy. I hope you like the script. Uh, leave a comment. Reach out to me if there's anything that you want to... Maybe there's something you don't like about it. Maybe there's something that I haven't thought of that you think is good. And here's a red. And he doesn't notice me. Okay. And yeah, enjoy the video guys, and I'll see you in the next one.